Okay, so this one is going to be about color palettes and coloring and working with values and clipping masks and some demonstrations like that. We'll be working with these kinds of things throughout the week as we try to add color to our interesting black and white image. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is just kind of talk a little bit about that and have a short discussion about, ah, that's a terrible, <laughs> sorry, uh, a short discussion about um, talking and clicking doesn't work always at the same time. Uh, let me think about this. New, print, letter is fine. We're going to work with that. Um, and yeah, it's easier if I show you instead of trying to talk over all the time. So I'll, I'll just come in and out. It's kind of weird. Sorry about that. But um, you can make some simple shapes holding down your lasso tool up here. Uh, I'm sorry, the marquee tool. But if you hold shift down, you'll, you'll notice I can get that pretty perfect circle, which is pretty nice and helpful. And since I'm just going to be working with some grayscale values, I'm just going to pop one in. And notice I made a second layer so I could work with it. And I'm going to go a little darker. Not totally dark, dark. And I'm going to select a, a nice airbrushing tool. And while my marquee is still selected, you'll notice I'm able to kind of shade that ball really pretty. And if you go a little bit too far, you could always come back up a little bit. Because you'll know that we do get some of that reflected light on the other side. Um, let's say I want to pick up this color because this is a little bit more appropriate and I want to get a little bit more of that roundness on that side so it feels a little bit more believable. You can tweak and play with this and go back and forth all the time until you're absolutely right and just certain. Notice that a soft edge makes the ball kind of soft and shiny. The second you take that and you turn that into a hard edge, however, now it's probably a very shiny ball. So just some things to consider. Edges matter when we're doing some of these things. Now we have a ball and it's by itself does not have color. There's a couple of ways to actually add color. And you can change your scale, change your size, um, all kinds of lovely things as you approach your ball. You can decide what you want to do. But let's say we want to add color. And because the values are already there, there's a n number of ways you can do this. The quickest, easiest way would be, as long as you're in a grayscale, is to actually go up and to adjust, go to hue, saturation, and hit colorize. Um, when you do that, you're able to manipulate which hue you want to that ball pretty quickly, as well as saturation. And you, if you want to kick that up a notch, you can kind of see you'll start to get some appeal. Maybe you want to go darker in your tones, or you want to kick it up to a higher key. So you have some ability to kind of control these things, and that's kind of nice when you're trying to add color. So that's way one. Another way to add color is um, you can add a new layer and down here, let's look at this, it's a gradient mask. If you hover on it, you should get a pop-up sticker. There we go. Uh, create or fill a new layer. Actually, <laughs> it's gonna give you the menu and then you're gonna have to find uh, your gradient in there, gradient map. There we go. And as we apply that, that is uh, creating this nice clipping mask on top of this but if you double click and you want to approach I'm sorry your different colors over here you can actually change those um, so instead of having white where black was and black where white was we can alter these and I'm getting a little bit of some fight back here on my clicking mouses so let me do that <laughs> I'll go to the drop down I'm using one of those Cintiq pens and I've got some options that I can work with and they're all kind of hardwired in and that's another way to kind of add some color into the gradient maps as you're working with it. Kind of fun. Maybe you want to flip those, you can slide those back and forth, move them around so they feel a little bit more uh, appealing to where you had those. Now you hit OK at any given point when you're using a clipping mask, it's the brush and the eraser that are really working those tools. So if you were to actually um, try to erase or add, uh, you have to click on the white part of that mask. And if you take something and you want to add to it, which you're not really seeing anything there, but if you do it this way, you can kind of see 
uh, the color is being masked out. And if you look at the funny little shape, it looks weird. Um, that's all great and dandy and gradient maps are super helpful, except for if, if you, especially if you want to add a secondary color. Um, and come on you, oh, I'm sorry, it's down here. You can do that that way too. And that's a good way to do that. So you can manipulate your colors pretty quickly. It just takes a little bit of savvy. You gotta practice with it. You gotta find your your fit and your flow and, and how it works for you as you're going through and building your, your different layers and your different colors. So we know we can go to image adjust. And just to recap, um, the hue, or we can use this gradient map function down here and play with those colors. But there's also another way, and I, I kind of like this way a lot more. Um, for me, it's a little bit easier to stick to and it's a little clearer. Um, once I have that new layer there, and you can either go to layer, uh, new, I'm sorry, layer, create clipping mask, or you can just uh, click on it to get your menu and then create clipping mask. And you're gonna see that there's another layer attached to it. Now, whatever you put on this layer will actually respond to the layer that's underneath it since they are uh, together. So if I decide to paint this ball more of a red color, you can kind of see what's happening. It's just only going to do that on that area. But you'll notice it kind of changed and, and obliterated all my values until you come down here and you go to color. <laughs> and you can also tweak your opacity for that color as well. So let's say you had like a multicolored ball and you wanted to bring it a little bit more purple. Now those are really hard brushes, remember? So if I wanted to go back and actually adjust and change those to like a, a softer brush, I can kind of feather some of that stuff in there pretty nicely, I might add. So now you're getting that better control for the color however you'd like to work with. Now that's kind of the my favorite way to really work with coloring the values and the in information on there. For example, if I bring up my fox now and we know we, we're going to add color to this character and he's on his own layer for values, if I make a new layer and I create this as a clipping mask layer, I can then apply the colors uh, to the fox and only to that gray area. Now you're seeing some purple show up on that white area and that tells me that I'm probably gonna have to um, kind of erase those sections and that's easily enough done. It's just carried over from what was on top of there. Um, and I can change this to uh, color if I wanna see a little bit more of a connection to those values. And perhaps I'm gonna add a little bit of some pink in there. Oop, I'm, I apologize. I was on my eraser, but let's kick that down a little bit and throw some pink in. It's not soft enough, so I'm gonna change and pick a different tool so it's a little softer. There we go. Now we have that nice little blush kind of going on because we have a pretty uh, warm fox that's gonna complement my warm figs when I get, get ready to uh, work with this. Now, and remember, that's its own layer. Here's the fun thing. Now that I've colored that layer, you don't have to necessarily recolor it. Remember that you can go into image, adjust, and you can change the hue pretty easily on that own clipping mask as you're working with it to get a little more realistic, or maybe you just want funky. Uh, you're able to control those, those slides again, and this is where that color theory is coming in really handy about now when we start talking about hue and saturation, and then lightness to darkness, and we're thinking about tints and shades again. Uh, as we apply that. Pretty cool, right? I like that stuff. Um, let's talk a little bit about uh, color palettes because there's a, 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 a variety of ways to get a color palette. And in the second video in this list, it kind of shows you how to import one and turn it into a table, etc., etc. If you are unfamiliar with that, it's really not too complicated to watch. Just go ahead and take a look. Um, one of the ways that we can kind of work with it. Oops, my bad. In, let me see if I can find this a quick picture real quick. Um, I really liked this picture of a fox. So I'm gonna open it up by itself. Let's say I like these images and I'm gonna make a new layer and I would like to kinda 
grab a couple of these colors. Um, I like this brown, so I'm going to uh, come down and just kind of, oh yeah, kick up my opacity and fudge that in there. And I like this color that's happening right there. I can kind of notice that that's the lighter color. And if you wanted to, you can just grab something that's a little bit more. And as you drag that around, more decisive into how orange you want to get or how bright you feel like you need to be. I kind of like that color. And you could work with that. This is its own little layer, so you could always pick that up and take it into your other uh, project. It's not uh, unheard of to just slide a, a layer into there um, as you're working with it. And let me show you how I might do that. While that's active, I just kind of slide that right over and on top. And I'll put it where I really want it to be in case I need to use those. So there's a couple of ways to do this. Let's get rid of those again. Let's go into, uh, give me a second because it'll take me a little bit of a minute as I start thinking about how I would like to also share with you uh, some different ways. Oh yeah, here it is, window. And we're gonna go into extensions. And we're gonna open up Adobe Color Themes, which is also uh, connected to its own online website. So if you were to look up, I think it's adobecolor.com or Adobe, uh, the other way around, we'll look it up right now. Um, Adobe, and we'll just go right down to color. Yay. And when you click on that, you're going to get this palette generator, which is kind of cool. It's really cool because if you sign into your Creative Cloud up here, you can export whatever you pick. And there's these assortments of themes that you can work with. And if you want to, let's say you really like that picture of that fox, you can just drag and drop it. Hello, I got these colors and I can hit save and I can sign in to get my palette. So let's just sign in. Hey, wait, what do you mean? Check your email. What? Oh wait, sorry, two L's. Ah, where's my phone? Gotta love all this stuff, right? Patience. Hmm, hmm. Now you know that code, but it's not good anymore. <laughs> Just so you're aware. <laughs> and, oh my goodness. I think it's that. Okay, let's try that again. I'm going to drag that picture in. I have these colors I want to work with. Publish to color. I can add a tag if I would like, or I can give it its own name. Um, and I could just say Fox and Fig. Why not? And I'll save that. Great. So it's connected to my cloud. So now when I actually open up my color themes and I want to explore my themes, Hopefully it's connected. Hey, look, there it is. There's my fox <laughs> and fig. Uh, I really enjoy Adobe Color. Um, I don't use it nearly enough, but I love the arrangements that you can get that are just kind of hardwired and already pre-picked out for you that the values work together because value is still most important. Don't forget that. It's the underlying structure of light and dark that really give our eye something to attach itself to. Um, but as we use these, these are very cool. You could also add these to your favorites as you start browsing. Let's say you don't even know what you're looking for and you just hit sad. <laughs> You'll get sad palettes and that can be a lot of fun as well. Ooh, I like this one. I might hang on to that because it just looks pretty. I like that combination. And anytime you go back into your themes, you should be able to see what's in your library. Um, and they might show up in different uh, sections. So you just have to kind of work with that as well. Of course, you have to have internet. Um, and as you bounce these around, you'll see that they'll start to spin. The website itself gives you a little bit more control over the different areas that you're working with. But kind of cool. You know you have your colors and there's a lot to play with. All the bells and whistles. These are just some of the intro things that I want to share with you that are tried and true and work really well. Um, if you have any questions, we'll be online all week trying to work with it. I'm going to hit not save for that right now and I'm going to continue to kind of play with the fox. And just to kind of recap how beautiful those things are, I found these online from Charles and Aren't they lovely little heads, but the values are just so important 
and we'll just kind of go through this one more time, add a layer, turn this into a clipping mask layer. Let's pick up something that looks a little, ah, uh, we won't go natural. We're going to go super natural. Let's go into the blues first for some of the, the lights and just remember, turn that into color so we can actually work with that. And there's some other settings that you saw me kind of flipping through. They'll do some different things. So you can do whatever you want, really, whatever gets the picture done. But you could see right away how kind of cool that is. And if you ended up wanting to change and add some direction to it uh, or some creativity to it, you could actually paint right on top of it. And all the values will pretty much stay the same. So you won't really hurt yourself. Um, now color has some value attached to it. So you know that that can create some problems in your design if you don't think about that ahead of time. But this is why it's so fun because you can just do what you want <laughs> on top of it. And that's why values are uh, so important as your base structure. When I went to college, folks, that was not necessarily the way it was preached to me as values first. And it took me a long, long time to get back to the, the right understanding that before you really apply that color, it is so vital to understand your darks and lights in the composition to help create that sense of contrast and lead the eye as well. That is that.